Hello, thanks for joining me. Today I'm in the National Rail Museum, standing by this lovely King Cars locomotive. It's number 6000, King George V, the real one of which is, of course, preserved. Now, what I've come here to do today is to try and answer a question I get asked quite a lot. A lot of people know my Miniature Railway Britain series and people are enjoying it and I'm really pleased that people are enjoying watching it. One thing I get asked quite a lot is what's narrow gauge, what's standard gauge and what's miniature. So I'm going to try and explain that. So here we have what is a standard gauge locomotive but obviously it's in miniature form. So it's effectively a model built to run on a miniature railway but it's a model of a standard gauge loco. But you also get quite a lot of miniature railways have scaled down narrow gauge locomotives. So just here we have another loco, again a standard gauge loco, but scaled down. Now if we look up here, I think it's one of the coolest miniature locos ever up there. I don't know much about it, it's a mallet so it's articulated. That is a scaled down narrow gauge loco to run on a miniature railway. So if I haven't already really really confused you there, what we need to do now is go and look at some narrow gauge loco. So as we walk through this part of the National Rail Museum, I could spend all day and hit so many fascinating things. There's architectural models, you know, there's all sorts, models of signals, chairs, even models of ships. There's so much in here. But what I want to do is explain to you the difference between miniature, narrow gauge, standard gauge. So basically, miniature is any scaled down railway nearly always built for pleasure, whilst narrow gauge wasn't necessarily built for pleasure, but it was where you couldn't fit a full-size railway, so the tracks had to be narrow, which I'm going to show you some examples of. Of course, this is all standard gauge stuff, the Deltic and the Western, and the Stirling Single. I've actually seen that on the main line once a few years ago, when it had done the railway children's play at Waterloo. She was towed by Class 47 to South. Now, regarding miniature and narrow gauge, down here we have a model of the Vale of Rydal Railway's locomotives. Now that is a miniature narrow gauge loco. So it's a model of a narrow gauge loco, but it's smaller than the real thing, so it runs on a miniature loco. That bloke there looks very excited to be at the National Railway Museum. Um, and in the background is Mallard. Now what we're going to do, so now we've seen a narrow gauge loco in miniature, let's look at um, a narrow gauge locomotive not in miniature. Um, so as we walk under the northeastern railway footbridge with Mallard next to us, like I said I haven't actually come here to do standard gauge stuff so it's great to see it in the background but that's not, um, perhaps we'll do that another day. Here we have a double fairly locomotive. So this is a definite narrow gauge, it's not miniature, it's smaller obviously as you can see with a standard gauge loco in the background it's smaller but it's not miniature. So railways like Stinyog don't feature in my Miniature Railway Britain because they're not miniature railways. They're scaled down railways because it wouldn't have been appropriate or possible to build a standard gauge railway. It doesn't mean I won't visit narrow gauge railways, I probably will, but they just won't feature under the Miniature Railway Britain series. So that's narrow gauge, standard gauge, and then narrow gauge in miniature. And I think on this section track here, this 15 inch section track, there was a Bassett Loke locomotive like you'll see at places like um, the real miniature railway which we'll perhaps go to at some point soon well we will go to exit to miniature railway and we're doing every miniature railway so as we walk through more standard gauge locos such as lodestar and then we have a great western rail car we'll take you to see some more narrow gauge locos or not necessarily locos but narrow gauge trains this one this is again an example of a narrow gauge railway where the train was decided it wasn't appropriate or necessary to build standing gauge. This is part of the old post office railway in London. Now it's a tourist attraction called Mail Rail. You can actually ride a passenger train around some of the system. So again, that's not a miniature railway. It's a narrow gauge railway. Obviously when it was built, they never imagined they'd carry passengers, but they do. So this carried post between Mount Pleasant Sorting Office and London Paddington, underneath London. It was the London Underground Line that not many people realized it existed. So that's narrow gauge. Now if we go through here, another narrow gauge railway, which people possibly didn't know about, is this one. This is the Channel Tunnel. So when they built the Channel Tunnel, narrow gauge tracks were laid to convey spoil and various equipment in and out the tunnel. And this is one of the trains that's been preserved. There are 
also other places where that's happened, such as Crossrail. Before the standard gauge lines of Crossrail were, were laid, there were narrow gauge lines. And carrying on with narrow gauge locos, I've mentioned in a couple of videos before about Crew Works. It had its narrow gauge system. Well, here we have another loco. Now, this one is narrow gauge, not miniature. It was built at Crew Works, but it ran at Horwich Works. And as you can see, it's a rather funny looking thing. It's a saddle tank. So, the tank is directly on top of the boiler, so it gives a very tall, strange, thin appearance. And we've got one more narrow gauge vehicle I'd like to show you. I think we've done all the miniature railway ones. We've already been to the miniature railway over in the South Garden on a different video. Here we have a narrow gauge railway carriage. So again, you can see it's quite large, so it's definitely not miniature. It's full size, but it's narrow gauge. It's narrow gauge. Well, see, full size is another complicated one because full size doesn't necessarily mean standard gauge. What full size means is not scaled down. So this isn't a scaled down carriage. It was built to be this size for the railway it ran on. So I hope I have explained a bit about the differences between standard gauge and miniature narrow gauge. And here's a stationary steam engine. We're gonna, I'm just gonna finish with one more definite standard gauge thing. As soon as I'm here, I want to show you the newest exhibit in the National Rail Museum. One of my favorites, one of the things I'd love to see steaming again is this bullet. I've always been fascinated by this logo. <laughs> Almost looks like a standard gauge version of that um, Horwich locomotive's tank. So I'm just gonna walk around in front of the loco and I shall reveal on the turntable to you, once it seemed impossible with CHSTs in here, but here we are. So Kenneth Grange, the pioneer class 43, is here on the turntable at the National Rail Museum. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I've met, let you understand the difference between narrow gauge, miniature, and standard gauge and please do feel free to like and subscribe and tell your friends thank you very much for watching and goodbye